Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about classification and the anatomy. We know that the the difference between the adult and children uh, is a growth plate, and it carries very uh, a great importance. And while treating facial injuries, one must be aware about the anatomy of growth plate, and that will help you in making some decisions. It's known as 15% of MSK injuries in children involves growth plate, and highest incidence is around 11 to 12 years in girls and 14 to 15 in boys. And type 2 Salter-Harris classification injury is the most common, and 7% of injuries end up into facial arrest. Now, there are many classification uh, were described after Salter and Harris, uh, many modifications, but we still prefer to use Salter and Harris because it has some prognostic uh, uh, importance. If you look at the cross section of a growth plate, uh, the, these are very important structures starting from the epiphyseal side to the metaphyseal. The first comes the epiphyseal vessels or E vessels, then comes the germinal layer. And then as this uh, cartilage cells passes uh, uh, proximally, there's known as zone of uh, proliferation. And then comes the zone of maturation where the calcification of these uh, chondrocytes uh, start taking place. The junction of the ossified and non-ossified chondral uh, layers are known as zone of provisional calcification, which is the, uh, the stress area or where the most injuries take place. And finally comes the M vessels or metaphyseal vessels. Uh, and more, one more important structure on the outside is the, uh, the chondral ring, which is also uh, um, uh, known to get injured if we uh, sometimes iatrogenically. So let's take uh, this Salter Harris injuries and the mechanism of injuries. The type 1 injuries uh, happening through the junction of calcified and non calcified hypertrophic cells. And here you can see that no vessels are involved. And so, uh, this type 1 injuries have less uh, physial arrest uh, issues. These are radial head the separation is an example where you can reduce and you can achieve full range of motion without any growth arrest. But there are some physes who have uh, a lot of undulations like distal femoral physes. And even type 1 injury in distal femur, uh, there are 60% of those have a rate of physial arrest and growth disturbance. So, when you are dealing with distal femoral physial injury, uh, you have to keep them in follow-up. One more example, distal femoral physial injury, which was treated, uh, uh, which presented late, treated conservatively, remodeled well, but eventually it ended up into uh, the central bar uh, and we had to excise and then it got stabilized. Coming to type 2 injuries, uh, these injuries uh, has extension from the metaphysis. So we have injury through the M vessels, having a small metaphyseal fragment and then it propels through the uh, zone of provisional calcification. And uh, the fragment which is there on the metaphyseal side, it is termed as Thurston-Holland fragment. And it is said that smaller the Thurston-Holland fragment, greater the chance of subsequent growth arrest. So that thing we have to keep in mind. And uh, this, for example, this type 2 uh, injury, which was fixed with uh, uh, two metaphyseal screws, the injury or growth arrest can take place at the physial part which is separated. So, the red arrow is a, where you have to look into this and this will lead to a medial arrest and so there can be a genuvarum deformity may develop. So, that we have to keep in mind when we follow this and them up. Peterson described one more variant, this 2D injury where the spike of the metaphysis can injure the growth plate and so this can lead to uh, growth arrest. So this is a child uh, in the 2007, this kind of very simple looking injury, but you follow them up and they develop uh, the physial bar formation. So this is an example of 2D injury. Coming to type 3 injuries is the, the fracture line propels from the growth plate and it goes all the way uh, through the epiphysis. Now these injuries happen in children who are about to uh, finish their growth. So part of physis is already undergoing physiologic epiphysodesis and so the fracture pattern would uh, propagate through the epiphysis. Now here the E vessels are injured. So these children have a higher rate of growth arrest and telo fracture is 
one of the common uh, example. Fortunately, this happens near the skeletal maturity and they don't have growth issue. But when it happens in two younger children like this, this seven-year-old boy with type 3 medial malleolus fracture, you can see at nine years follow-up, uh, at nine years, the child already developed physial arrest and uh, uh, genu uh, ankle varus deformity. Coming to type 4 injury, uh, here the fracture propagates from the metaphysis through the growth plate and through the articular cartilage. So here it is at a more risk because E and M with the epiphyseal and metaphyseal vessels both are affected and there are high rates of growth arrest and bar formation. And they also have intra-articular steps so you have to deal with that also. For example, this is an example of combined type 3 and 4 injuries we could fix with epiphyseal and metaphyseal screws. And on the medial side, we placed K wires, but you can see there is a six months post surgery, there is evidence of physial bar formation on the medial side. So, this patients, you, the anatomic alignment at the articular level is very important, but they are at higher risk of physial arrest. Type 5 injury is a compression type of injuries where you see, uh, which happens into the joint where they have a monoplanar movement. Uh, and here there is compression of the at the zone of maturation. Uh, this is a uh, nine year old girl uh, with distal radial buccal injury and uh, we were looking at just at the radius. But on follow up we see there is premature uh, physial arrest of distal ulna leading to the uh, radial positive variance. So this is a type 5 injury. If we look at the prognostic factor of growth arrest, you know, type 1, 2 and 3 as it is sparing the vessels, there are good prognosis provided epiphyseal blood supply is maintained. When it comes to type 4, there are high chances unless anatomically it is reduced. If it is not reduced, there are also chance of physial bar formation and type 5 carries worse prognosis. The results of Olmsted uh, country county study shows uh, the incidence of type 2 is highest, 54%. But as the type of uh, Salter Harris increases, we see there are high rates of late surgeries or growth arrest requiring intervention. So that way, uh, Salter Harris classification guides us about the prognosis also. Coming to two more types, one is the iatrogenic growth plate injury. We are doing a lot of uh, distal radius K wiring or wiring through the physis. And we see sometimes deformities when you are doing multiple attempts then there are high rate that you might, high chance that you might injure the epiphyseal vessels. So precautions you should exercise, do not use the power drill. A single attempt should be the final attempt and for that you may have good assistance in image intensifier technician as well as good assistance to hold the reduction <coughs> and try to use smooth pins and not the threaded pins to avoid injury. Now there are papers which shows that a wire diameter less than 2 millimeter may not uh, produce injury to the growth plate, so that is also an implication. But this patient which I, I shown before, who ended up into this deformity. And finally, injury to the perichondral ring, uh, this very important structure. This uh, child underwent uh, femoral plating for a fracture and at six months follow-up, uh, we show that there is some valgus uh, <coughs> of distal femur. At 12 months follow up the implant came out that there was progressive valgus and so the MRI was done what's going on and the primarily surgeon tried to put a screw in the epiphysis. That means that the, there was tether on the perichondral ring which led to and this is the clinical picture. Uh, the primary surgeon Dr. Rujuta ma'am uh, she did a growth modulation and it was, she was successful in opening this up and the deformity got corrected one and a half years later. So perichondral ring is also important structure to be observed. In summary, <coughs> maintain and obtain anatomic reduction in all injuries to growth plate. Avoid reduction after 7 to 10 days and keep high index of suspicion of growth arrest in type 3, 4 and 5. And follow up of these children beyond healing of fracture is very important because Bob Salter said that no one else can ruin your results but the follow up. Thank you very much.